Hi, and welcome to Whitmart's video series, Exploring All Things IP. To kick things off, we'll give you a quick overview of the history and fundamentals of Canadian trademark law. So let's get started. Trademarking in Canada is almost as old as the country itself. As we know, Canada became a country in 1867. One year later, Canadian trademark legislation came into effect under the Trademark and Design Act of 1868. Oddly enough, the first ever Canadian trademark was actually granted in 1866, two years before the Trademark Act even existed. How? Most likely the government approved the registration in anticipation of creating the Trademark and Design Act. So who holds the first ever registered Canadian trademark? A cigar company of all things called the Colonial, which unbelievably is still registered to this day. Fast forward to modern day Canada, where the trademarks are now governed by the Trademarks Act, adopted in 1954. The Trademarks Act is exactly what it sounds like, a legal document listing the rules and regulations of trademarking in Canada. The Act includes guidelines on everything from who can hold the trademark to what types of things can be trademarked and even gets down to the nitty gritty application requirements for registration. So who regulates the trademark registration process? We thought you might ask. Historically speaking, the Trademark and Design Act of 1868 mandated that the Minister of Agriculture was responsible for keeping the books for the trademark register and register of industrial designs, which yes, was a bit random. These days though, the process is maintained by CIPO, otherwise known as the Canadian Intellectual Property Office, established in 1991. CIPO's database has trademark information dating as far back as 1866, including the Colonial Cigar Company trademark registration, ATM 127, we mentioned earlier. Despite the historical age of our trademark system, Canada's legal landscape for intellectual property protection has definitely changed since its inception. In 2014, for example, CIPO proposed to make significant amendments to the Trademarks Act marking its first major overhaul since 1954. These changes aim to modernize Canadian trademark law to bring it into the 21st century. Plus it should align the Canadian system with the international best practices too, which have been in use around the world for decades already. Speaking of which, let's take a look at some of the international treaties and agreements currently governing how we register trademarks worldwide. First up, TRIPS, the Agreement on Trade-Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights, signed in 1994 by all United Nations countries of the WTO, or World Trade Organization. This agreement establishes the minimum standards for regulating intellectual property across all member nations. All countries, including the World Trade Organization, must sign and adopt the requirements of, of, of the agreement to maintain WTO membership. Moving on to the Paris Convention, established in 1883. The Paris Convention applies to protecting industrial property in the widest sense of the term, including patents, trademarks, industrial designs, utility models, service marks, trade names, geographical indications, and the repression of unfair competition. Fun fact, the Paris Convention is one of the oldest international treaties on intellectual property. Next up, NAFTA. You've probably heard this one discussed in the, in the news a lot over the last little while because of all the political discussion between Canada and the US. So forgive us for talking a bit, a bit more about it, but it's a big one that you should know about. NAFTA, also known as the North American Free Trade Agreement signed in 1993, was the first international trade agreement to include obligations to protect intellectual property rights NAFTA takes a three-pronged approach. The first sets forth minimum standards for protection of intellectual property. The second prong requires effective enforcement of intellectual property rights at the borders of NAFTA signatory countries to ensure that intellectual property rights holders are protected from infringement by imported products. 
The final prong is a dispute resolution procedure, which can include damages payable to intellectual property rights holders, or even trade-related sanctions. Beyond involvement with NAFTA and the WTO, SIPO aims to join forces with even more international trademark treaties to simplify global IP processes for Canadian businesses. With changes to the Canada's Trademark Act, fast approach in June 2019, there's definitely some updates your businesses need, business needs to be aware of. So we'll, we'll give you a brief overview of these changes. One of the upcoming changes will be CIPO's joining Madrid Protocol, Madrid System for the International Registration of Marks. Originally named the protocol relating to the Madrid Agreement of 1989, the Madrid system is a convenient and cost-effective solution for registering and managing trademarks worldwide. Filing a single application and paying one set of fees allows an applicant to apply for protection in up to 118 countries. The Madrid protocol will also allow applicants and trademark holders to modify, renew, or expand their global trademark portfolio through one centralized system. It should be noted that once registered, the owner does not hold one single trademark registration for each country, but rather a bundle of trademark registrations in separate countries. Additionally, SIPO's amendments will include joining the Nice Agreement of 1957. The Nice Agreement sets forth a classification system of goods and services for the registration of trademarks and service marks. It is a requirement of signatory countries to indicate in official documents and publications in connection with each registration the number of classes the goods or services associated with the desired mark belong. The adoption of the Nice Agreement greatly streamlines applications for trademarks in foreign jurisdictions of signatory countries. Lastly, the Singapore Treaty on the Law of Trademarks of 2009. Building on the Trademark Law Treaty of 1994, the Singapore Treaty on the Law of Trademarks seeks to establish a modern international framework related to the administrative trademark registration process. This too will streamline trademark applications in foreign jurisdictions that have ratified the treaty. All in all, SIPO's proposed amendments mean good things for businesses, both domestic and international. Whatever happens, you can trust us to keep you informed on all things trademarking. That's all we have for today, but stay tuned for our next video exploring the upcoming changes to Canada's trademark law and